All right, let's do this. Hey everybody, and welcome back. I wanna get this video over as quick as humanly possible because I hate filming wrap-ups, okay? So obviously this is gonna be a wrap-up, and if you've been paying attention, and I sincerely hope you haven't been, uh, you will notice that I have neglected to film a wrap-up for both November and December. In the month of November, I had only read five books because I was writing my own book that month. And then in the month of December, I read 20 books. Before I talk about these books, I must apologize because I have really bad allergies. And as a result, my sinuses are clogged. My voice sounds like the voice someone would have if they had a cold, except not like the sexy porn star voice they give you. Actually, I sound like somebody who went ahead and snorted an oyster. Okay, that's the voice we're serving today. Nothing I can do about that. I mean, realistically, I could wait till my voice sounded better and then film this video, but fuck that, right? <laughs> okay, so, oh gosh, I'm actually panicking at how many books these are. Okay, right, right, this is gonna be a real bitch to edit. Curse you, iMovie, for not having the option of just dragging the image in and having it be the size you dragged it in. Why the fuck do I need to put it in, resize it, make sure it doesn't fade out, you know, just mm, annoying. Anyway, uh, where was I? All right, so November. The first book I read in the month of November is False Witness by Karen Slaughter. This book is one that I read because my good friend Gabby was doing a live show on it and because Karen Slaughter is the author of Pretty Girls, which is pretty much the book that got me back into reading when 2020 started happening and I had acquired significantly more time because of being home a lot. So I can thank Pretty Girls for that and thank Karen Slaughter for that. I don't really wanna give much away because the very first chapter had a twist that floored me. But I will say that this book is about these two sisters. They went through something traumatic in the past and we hard cut to the future. We learn that their relationship is rather fraught. They don't really talk much. They are linked by this trauma and this other trauma from the past starts to materialize. And this book is about how they address this trauma. It's really good, I really enjoyed it. Loved the characters, loved the suspense. I was completely hooked from start to finish. One of the main characters is a lawyer. So all the behind the scenes shit that lawyers have to do when they deal with other lawyers and the sketchy shit that goes into trying to prove that your client is innocent, that was super interesting to me, okay? I dug that. That was nice. Overall, I loved this book. I don't have a single negative thing to say about it. I give it five stars. It is a perfect book. I understand that this book doesn't exist in a vacuum and as such will inevitably cause it to be compared to Pretty Girls, but it's just an inaccurate comparison to me because these are two very different stories. This is its own thing. It's a great book. Both books are freaking amazing. No one book has to be better than the other. Incredible book, five stars. Now, I wish I could say the same about this next book, but oh boy, oh, oh boy, let's, let's, let's just get into this. The next book I read is a novella called Nothing But Black and Teeth by Cassandra Cow. This is a book that my friend Gabby read in her Camp Weekend Ween vlog. She gave it one star, okay? And that made me curious. I was just like, why does this book that has such a beautiful cover and an interesting premise. A premise that involves these people renting this like supposed old haunted mansion in Japan and getting haunted by this geisha lady. That sounds freaking amazing, okay? And I was like, why one star, girl? Were you in a bad mood that day? I can promise you this. I was in a good mood when I started this book and in a bad mood when I finished it because this is probably one of the worst books I have ever read in my entire life. I don't even know where to start, okay? The cast of characters were the most vapid, unlikable, stupid people I have ever 
read from. All they felt towards each other was weird, unrequited sexual longing and anger and jealousy and resentment. I was wondering why any of these people were friends to begin with. Um, the writing was absolutely terrible. I reviewed this book for my bookstagram and I actually put some quotes over here that I'm gonna, I'm not gonna read this out loud, okay? You can pause this. Actually, let me just give you a dramatic reading of one because bitch, when this line came out, I was just like, what the fuck is in front of me right now? This is a horror book, by the way. Life doesn't have any meaning without her. Anyway, I can't, I don't want to go on in the world without her. I'll cut out my own heart, fist clenching the chest. Fuck off. You've never had a proper relationship. You don't know what it's like to need someone, to love someone, to give a sh**. Yeah, this is a horror book. I was quaking in my boots. Not. So yeah, the writing was unbelievably bad. This book was super boring. The story was like, it, nothing happens. Nothing happens in the whole book. And then like a little thing happens at the end. But then aside from that, it's just like, why am I here? Why am I doing this to myself? This book was so bad, I gave it zero stars. Okay, and that's like a first on this channel, but this book deserves it. All right, so the next book I read was a buddy read with my friends Jan and Jesse, and that book is Satisfaction Guaranteed by Karelia Sets Waters. It's this lighthearted rom-com, haters to lovers romance, sapphic romance. I read this for a sapphic -athon. Basically, it's about these two women that hate each other, but through circumstances end up running this sex toy shop together. So I do like the sex positive messages, but I did not like the fact that during a sex scene, uh, she climaxes and the author puts in a line about how she screamed like a hawk and I, I just laughed um, uncontrollably. <laughs> it, it's cute, nothing special, gave it three stars. Next one is Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright. This is a book that I read for my series on this channel called Reading Most Disturbing Books Ever Written. I have part one, part two, part three, part 2.5, all linked down below. It's really fun, I enjoyed filming it, and I'm so grateful that I got to read this book for that vlog because it was such a wonderful joy. I love this book so, so, so much. Please be observant of trigger warnings if you choose to read this book because it's got trigger warnings as long as the first chapter. So we basically follow this serial killer and serial killer is me putting it pretty lightly, okay? And one thing leads to another and he meets this other serial killer named Jay and they discover that they have the same kinds of interests in methods of murder. And then we follow these other two main characters, my favorite of which being a man named Luke, because between those two characters, he is the much older one, the one who's been beaten up more in life, the, you know, the one who's like taken more punches, taken more hits. He is diagnosed with AIDS. His brutal, honest cynicism toward the world and what it's like living with the HIV AIDS virus was just so amazing to read about. He by far was the highlight of this book. And yeah, it's just such an incredible read. I gave this book five stars, a resounding five stars. It is without a doubt the best book in this entire wrap up, okay? I love it that much. Okay, so the next book I read was for that same blog and that is Womb by Duncan Ralston. It's about this guy who goes to this hotel room and he invites a hooker and he tells her about various stories and the stories kind of connect to a point where we realize why he specifically wanted her in the room with him and it is this Freudian pastiche of disgustingness and oh stuff about family and ugh, it's sexual longing and it's mm, I don't want to get into it it's it's fucked up I I think I gave it like four stars or something this isn't a good review I don't give a shit go watch that vlog I get into it a bit more there for many it's not gonna be a fun time but for me it was a great time, okay? Okay. And then the final book I read for that blog is Boy Erased by Gerard Conley. And this is a memoir and it talks about the time that this guy spent in conversion therapy. And it discusses so many difficult topics, you know, 
like the cost of losing family over being who you are and the cost of coming out, having an identity crisis and you know the religious bigotry of this community and the hypocrisy and just how oppressive it is. Definitely a rather disturbing book. I think this book took place in 2004 so the fact that establishments of this sort are still lurking around at present day and we're lurking around in the 2000s is just terrifying to me. Definitely worth a read. It'll open your mind. It'll open your heart. It'll make you more empathetic. I didn't really give this one a star rating, but just take my word for it. It's good stuff. Okay, so next I read some manga that I really enjoyed. The first one being In These Words by... I don't actually know who the author is. I don't think it says. But it's basically about this guy who is a... I think he's like a psychiatrist, a professor or something. And he's tapped to interview this serial killer. And it's so juicy, super smutty. Um, it's a horror manga, so beware. It gets very graphically violent and very triggering. I love the art style. I don't think I can show anything to you because of how extreme this is, but let me just... Okay, yeah. Awesome. Really good. Love the artwork. I think there's only like three volumes out, which is such a shame because I really like this story. But yeah, good stuff. I gave this volume five stars. I read the second volume too. Amazing. I love it. And then I also read a bunch of volumes of Berserk. We follow this man named Guts, and it's set in this place with, uh, as you can see, beasts and dragons and fairies. And it's one of the most popular um, mangas in Japan. It's really good. I have very fond memories of watching the anime version as a kid. And by fond, I mean the finale destroyed me more than a little life did. <laughs> True story. The anime ended on the most mortifying cliffhanger you could ever imagine. I dare you to name a more mortifying cliffhanger than that anime. And then they, I think they ran out of money so they couldn't continue it. So um, that's why the manga has to be read. I read a bunch of these. It's really good. I was giving the volumes five stars left and right. So I am very excited to see what the rest of this series has for me in 2022. Fuck, hello, happy new year. Hi. So yeah, really good stuff. Loving the fantasy vibes, loving the gore, loving the characters. Guts and Griffith, honestly. Ah, oh, iconic. So iconic. And then, oh gosh, oh no. Do I need to, do I need to talk about this book now? Can I, ah, uh, okay, there's no skipping it. I read Credence by Penelope Douglas because people were saying it was smut and taboo and it was both of those things but it was also insufferably annoying and gross and I did a full drunk review. Assuming I haven't privated this video yet, you can probably find it down below. So I don't know, maybe give that a watch. It's probably gonna give you a headache given all the amount of stuff I had to bleep out. <laughs> it's about this underage girl, her parents commit and so she ends up getting adopted by her uncle, but her uncle is like her dad's adoptive brother, so they're not actually related by blood. And he has these two sons, and they get snowed in, and it's smut, use your imagination, it's disgusting, just, uh, just, uh, just no, okay, just like literally no. <laughs> and then after Credence, I read something I actually liked, and that is A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood. I read this book because Jack from Jack Edwards had it in this like gift guide kind of thing, and he had it classified under books for sad gays. So I was like, hello, the target market is me. So I got the book, I read the book. We follow this man named George, and this book basically follows the day in the life of a man who is grieving the loss of his lover, his longtime lover, in the 60s when being gay was not seen as something socially acceptable. Um, and it's really good, says many interesting things about society that are even relevant to this day about society, about bigotry, about discrimination of minorities, about prejudice, really good stuff, highly recommended. I gave this book five stars, I love this book. And then the next book I read is a book that I have been recommended so many times on here, and that is The Winter People by Jennifer McMahon. It's basically set in two timelines, and in the first timeline, yeah, I really don't want to give much away of the story. I'm just not- I'm just gonna skip giving a synopsis because I think you should go into this book 
knowing as little as possible. But we follow two timelines, something happens in the past, and then people start going missing in the future, and then the two events coincide. Pretty epic, very fast-paced. It had me guessing all the way through. If you're in the mood for horror that's gonna remind you of Pet Cemetery, go forth. And then after that, I read this short story called I Have No Mouth and I'm a Scream by Harlan Ellison. And this book is about this dystopian future where the big countries in the world developed supercomputers that turned into one supercomputer that then developed human-like sentience and consciousness, but of course since it was made by human beings it exacerbated all the negative characteristics of humanity and went genocidal and killed all these humans and kept the remaining ones alive to torture them. And this book says so many things about man's relationship with technology, about the paranoia that stems from that, about man's senseless hatred for one another. It asks things like if you had all perfect intelligence but couldn't actually do anything about it because you don't have a body, would you be resentful of your creator? What if you were a perfect being created from a bunch of imperfect beings? So good, so thought-provoking, definitely recommend it. I gave it four stars. If you love this book, please go watch the 1995 original anime movie Ghost in the Shell, one of my all-time favorites. It's so incredible. Go forth, just do it. Trust me, trust me. And then after that, I read this book called <laughs> Sick Bastards by Matt Shaw. I, I, I don't even know what to say about this book, honestly. It's a book set in this post-apocalyptic landscape where nuclear weapons have wiped out all of UK. So it's like that movie Threads, right? And we basically follow this family of incestuous cannibals as they try to maintain their sanity and sustain their lives in this barren wasteland that once was the UK, I believe. And I really enjoyed it, actually. It was very Hills Have Eyes which I love. It was so much fun, to be honest. The gore is good, the suspense is good, the pacing is good, and there is like a pretty huge plot twist at the end that I did not see coming, but when I saw it, I was just like, oh, right, um, okay, 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 I'm here for this. I'm not mad at this at, at all, actually. This is good stuff, all right? Good stuff, Matt Shaw. So yeah, that's Pretty much that on that, four stars. All right, so the next book I read is this book called Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir. This was one of my most anticipated books of the year. It is a book that intrigued me so much with the premise. This book was from the same author as The Martian. Now, I haven't read The Martian, but I did really love the movie, so I was curious to see where this would go. We basically follow this guy who's awoken up from a coma and he is alone on this spaceship, doesn't know where he is, doesn't know what his mission is. He has to recall certain things from his past to give him clues about what he's supposed to actually be doing. It's good, it's action-packed, um, the story is very internal, so a lot of it happens in his head. It's so much of him thinking about how he's gonna go about the situation, so not much like physical action happens. And then there's like a huge twist in the middle, which I didn't see coming, but I loved it. And it did bring in some comedic relief and some jovial lightheartedness. I can't even tell you what movie this reminds me of without spoiling the huge thing that happens that I didn't think was gonna happen, but did happen, and I was just like, okay, I like that. It's apparently being turned into a movie with Ryan Gosling. If there's anything I could say that I didn't like about it, I perhaps would just go as far as to point out that there was so much techno babble, so much, um, sci-fi jargon that I didn't really connect with, that I was kind of bored, you know, as I was listening to it, because I listened to this through an audiobook. I personally could have done with a lot less of the science stuff, but there's no way this story could have been told without all that stuff in a credible fashion. You know, like, the stuff had to be in there. I can see why this stuff had to be in there, so I can't fault the book for putting it in there, you know? but I didn't enjoy having to listen to that much scientific jargon. Okay, so that docked it down a star for me, 
and I gave this book three and a half stars, okay? And then after our two books that I read for a vlog, so I'm just gonna go through these really quickly. I read them for a vlog where I read thrillers about stupid rich people. I'm gonna link this vlog down below. Um, for this vlog, I read The Echo Wife and The Couple Next Door. They were books about dumb rich people. The Echo Wife, I gave one star, and The Couple Next Door was so bad it's good. I gave it four stars. It's not good, it's bad, but spectacularly bad, okay? Okay, watch the vlog for more details. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe if you haven't already. I hope to see you in future videos, and as always, I hope to see you in future videos, and as always, take care. I lose myself in this city now